I'm going to start over again. So, uh, welcome to the Curious About the School Travel Plan webinar. A uh, reminder to everyone, please mute yourself. So, Megan, I don't think you're muted. Um, and if you have any questions during the meeting, you can uh, write them in the chat box and I'll be checking them. If you're calling in by phone, which I don't think anybody is, um, you can um, either email us at info at waytogovt.org or you can email just me at education at locomotion.org. So both those emails will go right to my same inbox. Or um, when question period time comes, you can just unmute yourself and talk, but that's only if you're on the phone. If you're on the computer, please use the chat function. Um, and without any further ado, I'm going to uh, get started with Allegra and Deb. Good morning. This is Deb speaking, and I am the uh, business outreach manager for Go Vermont. And I'm really excited to and thrilled to be here to give you uh, a background and an introduction um, why develop travel plans. Um, we'll go over some elements, um, elements of a school travel plan, and then putting your action plan, or putting your plan into action, if you will. Um, and uh, I'm going to just begin by giving you that background, and then I'm going to hand it over to Allegra to uh, give you all of those elements and specifics and details. So just that background, uh, well, most of you are probably aware we've uh, been doing Safe Routes to Schools and Way to Go for well over a decade now, and last year uh, the coordinators of Way to Go thought it would be a good idea to actually join together Safe Routes to Schools uh, and Way to Go. And, and last year actually we decided to focus on schools for Way to Go because of the uh, growth in par uh, participation in Way to Go. We were very excited and think that um, the two are, are really a natural match, if you will. And if you think about it, Way to Go is more behavior based, trying to encourage everyone to bus, walk, bike, roll, and carpool. And Safe Routes has that component in it, the encouragement but um, also has the physical side where we're actually looking at the safety of routes and um, helping get to school more efficiently. Um, so, you know, I'm really um, proud of the schools that have um, actually been doing well at this. There's now 50 travel plans uh, across the state of varying sizes and shapes. And here we're looking at Swanton and St. Albans School um, and proud to see what they're up to to help their bike ped um, and introduction to getting to school uh, by walking Wednesdays, you know, enormous numbers of students. So why are we doing this? And I think it's a good good time to step back and say, um, well, the rapid commercialization and, and, and market penetration of vehicles allowed a lot of leakage from downtowns and villages of people, um, and now this car has enabled us to live in uh, rural and suburban um, parts of the state, and now we're actually in a little conundrum uh, where all of those populations left our cities, they've been fairly flat, um, and we're struggling to meet the needs of young and old now, and uh, we've actually kind of isolated ourselves. So this is a great opportunity to look at um, in the Safe Routes to School and the Way to Go program to actually encouraging decision makers, empowering them, and volunteers to make our communities great places to live, work, and play. Um, and, you know, this is an example of why it's <coughs> so um, disturbing and why we've got a climate change problem, why we have, um, why we're not able to make our goals in that, you know, it's the way we settled with the automobile. And this image on the left, actually, I'll credit uh, Julie Campoli, 
it's actually an image, the yellow is parking and the red is buildings. And you can see in downtown Morrisville how constrained and small it is with uh, a good population living in a much smaller footprint, able to walk around. And then as Morristown, as we settled with our vehicles, Morristown actually has much more parking in yellow and much greater distances. So that actually makes it difficult and unsafe for us to feel comfortable walking and accessing places where we need to go without a car. And, you know, other things, I think it's really important to step back and say, you know, this auto dependency that we have actually has um, implications and impacts on our environment, on our pocketbooks. And, you know, we actually have the ability to stop the leakage from, um, com you know, our, our economy um, having $1.3 billion in fuel alo alone uh, leaking out of Vermont's economy. And if we could just capture a piece of that through our actions, through making our routes safer, we could actually find the dollars to make those improvements in those pathways, those multi-use paths, those sidewalks, those bike paths. We could even have free transit and maybe railroad service um, uh, all over Vermont. And recent findings show that we really have been, um, even in spite of all the good things we've done at Way to Go and Safe Routes, we're still increasing. Um, this, this chart actually shows the drivers of things that we could do to respond to the 16% growth in greenhouse gas emissions since 2005. I'll credit EANVT.org, which has a good report that um, schools and others, volunteers can access. But transportation really is our largest greenhouse gas sector. And we really need to start to electrify and start to use or continue to use and strengthen mass transit ridership. And now I'm going to transition and hand it over to Allegra. She's going to talk about um, what a, you know, what is a school travel plan, dig into the details, and give us some successes of why. And actually, this graph shows you why. <laughs> and this illustration shows you why. Great, thanks, Deb. So I think, you know, Deb's done a great job, ta job talking through, um, you know, all of the, the many reasons from the public health benefits to um, environmental to, you know, just having a, a plan that says X, Y, and Z it makes it much easier to get funding for improvements. So there's a variety of reasons to develop a plan. Um, and so getting into the nuts and bolts of a plan, and, and just to quickly introduce myself for those who don't know me, I am um, work on our bike and pedestrian planning at Local Motion, and as part of the Way to Go team and partnership, I'm helping to lead the school travel planning efforts across the state. Um, so, and I'll get into to some of the, the details of that, as, as we mentioned. So, I love this cartoon, um, Ian Lockwood, who's a, a transportation engineer and also a bike and pedestrian advocate, which is often a, a rare <laughs> combination in one person. Um, I think it's a great representation of sort of this cultural shift that needs to happen and um, you know a, a school travel plan is really a roadmap for how do we how do we shift this culture away from relying on personal vehicles as a way to get to school and um, shifting to more act, active transportation. So you know I think just kind of before we, we get into <laughs> some of the nuts and bolts you know, we really are thinking about uh, school travel planning as sort of a menu of options that's really tailored to a specific community need. So there is, you know, an overarching framework, but uh, really we encourage communities and schools to be, you know, working um, in a way that makes sense for them, you know, taking on the, the pieces that make sense. And that ideally it's really something that's community driven and sort of integrated into the school curriculum and other activities and um, not a plan that just sits on the shelf, that it's something that you can immediately take and it's, it's actionable um, and you're, you're con continually um, moving forward with it. So, you know, I think the elements of a school travel plan really, f it, the framework follows any strategic planning process where you're, you know, getting the word out, <laughs> you're bringing 
the, the right pe team together, um, collecting data from various sources and getting uh, the public's input, and then developing goals and a strategy um, that can be adopted and used. And again, you know, many of these steps can happen simultaneously, um, but this is just kind of a broad framework to work from. So, you know, first step is really, you know, how do you build excitement around this in your school community? Um, you know, if finding a champion, some of you may be the champions who will be leading these efforts, um, you know, in your PTO, uh, working closely with the town, with your regional planning commission. Um, and then starting to assemble that team. And so this is sort of a list of different types of folks that you might want to bring to the table. You don't need all of these people, but, you know, it can be helpful to have a parent. In some cases, it's helpful to have students involved closely. Um, you certainly want school administration um, and, again, that champion to really spearhead the efforts. And then, you maybe know... Maybe even want more than one champion to... Maybe more than one. <laughs> that would be great, right? Uh, as many as many people as possible, but really the diversity of um, perspectives and expertise that you're bringing makes the plan the planning process more effective. And then, so there's many different ways to gather information, and we, you know, obviously there's <coughs> we're developing some uh, guides and frameworks to help link you to some of those resources that already exist. The SafeRootsData.org is a great, you know, place to start. Um, regional planning commissions can help with mapping. They have a lot of, you know, data on crashes, on uh, via, um, traffic speeds, volumes. Um, and, you know, you don't need all of this data, but we just want you to know that it's available. Obviously, it's helpful to look to other existing transportation plans, bike walk plans, regional plans, um, town plans that have a transportation element to be thinking about, you know, making sure that the plan aligns with the objectives in those. Um, there's a number of great ways to get, you know, students and teachers and involving curriculum, so doing um, counts of cyclists and pedestrians with students, developing, um, you know, walking maps and uh, finding out where people are living, so where, how far are they commuting, what are the best bus routes if that um, is needed. And then a lot of times being more mindful of what's going on at your school at that level, you know, that, that's what is one beginning thing that you can do, or one starting point that you can do, and a lot of them have done that, and a lot of schools that have developed travel plans. It's becoming in tune with what's going on. What does your parking lot look like, and how full is it, or how can you actually empty it by activities that you do? So there's the actionable sort of thing outside the travel plan. So some of those that might be like, I want to get going right away, you can actually do things in parallel and capture mm -hmm. it within your planning process. So that's the rolling up your sleeves sort mm -hmm. of thing. Right, and, and to get students involved in, you know, doing a walk audit with, you know, your team that you've put together looking at sidewalk conditions or, you know, lighting or places that are not, you know, not as safe for crossing um, can be a helpful way to think about where are those locations that you want to prioritize investment. Right. And then, you know, just getting parent perceptions of what are some of the barriers to um, sustainable transportation. It was interesting looking at back at a lot of this, the different plans that, um, you know, weather actually isn't something that people highlight as a major obstacle um, and distance isn't. It's really high, high traffic volumes and speeds on the major roads that wow. people are traveling on. So, um, so the surveys can be a really useful component as well. But again, you know, picking and choosing between what, what makes sense for you and we can help compiling this data and with some of the mapping and connecting to other resources. And then obviously the public input piece, which is very much in line with, you know, gathering the data, just there's many ways to do this online through, you know, a range of ways to do this um, through existing school events or PTO meetings. And I think um, local motion and um, Upper Valley team, you know, like um, Vital Communities, uh, Paige and, and Bethany and, and you guys have actually gotten into schools to actually do some gathering of public input. So, I mean, what other schools that they haven't done that, what we're trying to do, our, one of our objectives is to bring those successes or those mm -hmm. stories and network 
together through the Way to Go website and empower mm -hmm. um, and share. So encouraging people, if they've got the story, to actually tell us about it so mm -hmm. that we can share, mm -hmm. share More with others. Studies. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, from there, you're really at a place where you have the, the information about kind of what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, what are some opportunities um, to develop a strategy document and perhaps a map as well, um, and really to think about what are some of the short term, you know, one to two years, medium term and long term, and really divide your strategies up in terms of those things that you can do quickly, whether it's, you know, repainting a crosswalk, um, changing some school policies, really ramping up your Walking Wednesdays programming um, to something that's sort of medium to longer term, which would be like redesigning an intersection or, um, you know, adding a bike lane, that sort of thing. And we'll get into some of that a little bit later. So most, I think, folks are familiar with the framework of the, either the five or the six E's. So, you know, the engineering piece. So thinking about what are the on the ground changes to streets um, and intersections that need to happen the education piece, so for instance, you know, through Local Motion, our Bike Smart program goes to schools and teaches children how to ride to be, you know, confident cyclists. Um, the encouragement piece, so all the programming, like Walking Wednesdays, that schools lead. Um, and then enforcement, so as an example, we worked recently um, on a project at the Edmund School of Burlington, and there was, you know, a lot of challenges with getting parents to stop parking uh, in the bus lane, which was also a, 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 the main area where students would bike through. So, um, you know, get those places that you need more enforcement and support there, making sure that those are in there. And then the ongoing evaluation, so making sure that you're, you know, doing bike counts regularly or whatever is in your, your strategy document, that it's an ongoing process and integrated. Question, Allegra. I know that some schools um, have actually engaged their fire departments. Do you think that some, like notifying your police department and your planning office or your highway op public works office, of, those are the ones that you might engage mm -hmm. as you're doing For sure, something? that's definitely that a good partnership. And so you have your document, you've gotten input, um, and so the next step is really, you know, presenting it to the town, to the city council, select board, and school committee, and really getting it to be adopted and, you know, sending out a press release, making sure that people are aware of all the work that's gone into it and the work that's to come. Um, so, and this is kind of the fun part, so, you know, this is, <laughs> you know, getting into putting your plan into action, and again, you know, what that looks like is going to really range depending on where you are in some, you know, if your school's in a village center or a downtown, there might be um, quick build projects or things that can be done more immediately to improve crossing distances and safety or to add bike lanes. Um, on more rural roads, it might be just widening shoulders to make biking more accessible or um, developing off-road paths. You know, in some places, kids are hiking to school. You know, it's not, it's not really walking; it's hiking. Um, so, depending on where you are, that that will vary. We've see also a cargo bike in here, where a parent might be going to work uh, with their children to, to daycare after they've dropped off one to a school. Right. So we so um, we have a lending library for e-bikes and and a couple of electric cargo bike electric assist cargo bikes that we lend out to families who are interested in potentially purchasing them or financing them, there's now a number of affordable ways to do that. And we do feel like there's some potential, you know, to, to get people who are dropping kids off on the way to school. Is this something that um, we could make more accessible to, to, especially to school communities and parents um, as a really a fun way to commute with your family that's sustainable. Um, so just a couple of kind of getting into a couple examples of, you know, how this is getting integrated into classrooms. Um, you know, it's not just the drop off and the walk and walk to school or, or from school, but, you know, during the day, how are people walking to field trips? Um, how are you using the community and thinking about how do we get around sustainably? Um, this is an example actually from a 
eighth grade group in Wisconsin, the students developed a weekend um, biking trip, so they were learning about bike maintenance, they learned about map reading skills, you know, the trip planning element, and this, and an active lifestyle, and this was all built into um, their kind of school travel planning work. And locally, we had schools take walking their students to the Monshire Museum or to the local fire department or to a house a nearby orchard to glean apples to donate to a food shelf. So those are all opportunities for the teacher to look at your own community and for non-motorized ways to travel, you know, choosing yeah. and, and modeling that. Exactly. And discovering the richness of your own community for educational opportunities is really powerful and it's Save money too. So as best as they're not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> we know that. <laughs> There's so some other local examples. So we worked local motion worked recently with a group of students in Rutland, teacher and administration as well, um, that was really concerned about the safety of the, their school drop off. And uh, we have a pop up trailer which we bring and loan out to different communities to, you know, for a day or for a week test out new infrastructure, where it, whether it's a bike lane or it's curb extensions to make a, a intersection safer, um, or a traffic circle. We have all the supplies of, and temporary paint and bollards to do that, and so it's been a really effective way to build support for projects that we'd like to see happen permanently, but without a lot of investment of resources. So it might be a couple of hundred dollars for supplies versus... Twenty or thirty thousand to actually make that change permanently, and so it's a great way to get input. And um, this was a really very uplifting sort of story and partnership, where the students were really leading it. They went to the traffic advisory committee and said, "You know, we want a safer crossing at our school. Um, people are going too quickly along this road, and what can we do?" Um, and so they proposed this plan, worked with us to design it, and you know had a big uh, sort of community festival around the back to school opening and the students educated teachers about what the change in drop off routine was made a little brochure and then um, you know ultimately they've now sought funding to put this in semi permanently so it's a great example of sort of a success story of students leading the way in this regard was the advisory committee um the city of the Rutland, traffic advisory, the traffic advisory. Yep. so yep. they so actually the public works department they stepped up so that would be like i'm guessing a lot of schools would have questions well how do we even get started mm -hmm. with this who do we even talk to mm -hmm. so you act a local motion acted as an intermediary between the school and the local officials and or, or and and actually we did get, and we did and we we actually have a lot of sort of template resources that we can share as part of some of these other resources right. we're developing with other schools that would be interested in leading a pop-up project like this. We recently cool. worked with a school with the Edmund schools in Burlington to do something similar, although it was a bike lane. So we it's certainly something we're interested in continuing to to support schools to work on. Um, and then, you know, a more um, sort of, you know, through the woods, students traveling in Shelburne to the community school um, over the past 10 years would, would either have to cross a river or go over a mile out of the way. And so um, o over time, they've, you know, used rafts, they had a tree fall down, and there was, you know, this very unsafe crossing over a log for a while. <laughs> and then ultimately, um, this actually just in the past couple of weeks, they've finished, um, a, a, you know, engineered and completed a bridge that was constructed by some of these students and their families um, to make this safer crossing. So, and they worked with us. We have a, a function through Local Motion's website that's sort of a crowdsourced funding mechanism and online petition to gain, show community support for a project. And so that, I think, was also helpful to them. And, um, and that's something we can, you know, help other communities with if you have a project or initiative like this that you'd really like to see happen. Um, we're happy to work with you to try to make it a reality. A couple other sort of examples of, you know, local advocacy or ways especially to engage students in educating policymakers and decision makers about the needs in their community. So photo voice is a great way to get students out taking pictures um, about what the challenges are that they 
would like to see addressed and then you know putting together basically a gallery of um, different ways that those things could be addressed by the city or town and then in South Burlington recently another uh, local ballot initiative Penny for Path so as a way to raise more money um, directly to go towards improvements to and new bike and pedestrian infrastructure so that was another initiative that we worked with a number of families and local bike pet advocates on but certainly helped you know this the funding it's now they've raised about 300,000 um, they'll have that every year so that will make a big difference in terms of local safe routes to school. Allegra um, and, and Mary Catherine, I think this Penny for Paths is an excellent idea um, because a pathway doesn't stop at the edge of South Burlington. Um, could we inspire working through regional planning commissions and local motion to actually have this go viral mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know so that we can actually make our pathways connected across county lines. Imagine that mm -hmm. and town lines. Uh, we need to see something more like this where you have dedicated funding behind mm -hmm. this. And and I'm proud of South Burlington's effort. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been doing this for many, many, many years, many times rubbing sticks together to mm -hmm. try to make it happen. But it has uh, actually become a um, really big asset. And now you want to live near a mm -hmm. bike path um, mm -hmm. or a multi-use path. So this is, you know, actual physical things on the ground is what Safe Routes and the Way to Go program, uh, what we're aiming for, and mm -hmm. that's why we're doing this webinar. Yeah, and just a, a side note on that, so I've been talking to the Bike Pet Committee in South Burlington about creating a webinar and some other resources, because we have had requests from Shelburne and other places that are thinking about, Great. is this a campaign that we want to take on locally? So, yeah. You're already one step ahead, <laughs> <I'm> behind. <laughs> um, and so, you know, there's a lot that can be done with little to no funding, we believe, but there's also, it's obviously, a lot of this requires more investment, and so there's a range of ways to think about that and to approach it, and we wanted to share some resources. You know, I think there's creative funding for some examples here of thinking about what, was, what does infrastructure look like with an artistic sort of take on it, and so there's grants through the Vermont Arts Council, there's grants through the Department of Housing and Community De Development, obviously the bike and pedestrian grants through VTrans, um, and then, you know, some smaller grants that are emerging. We're thinking about a small mini-grant program for livable streets work. There's the AARP um, community action grants, which can fund things like parklets or, you know, a new bike rack. And um, Deb, I don't know if you want to speak yeah, to Yeah, let me speak to the Go Vermont mini-grant. Uh, this has been in place for a number of years for communities to uh, apply to or energy committees, um, basically to promote Go Vermont. And Go Vermont is a clearinghouse, sort of an umbrella, if you will, for all things transportation at connectingcommuters.org. Connecting and um, through this, um, we have actually on that website um, downloadable uh, mini-grant application where a school, if it wants to promote that behavior side of the, uh, of the uh, program, a cultural shift, um, getting people out of their cars, <coughs> anything that uh, we can actually uh, bring you to the resources at Go Vermont to understand how people can uh, get the free um, uh, incentives to ride the bus, to take transit, to walk and bike more. You're eligible for a $500 grant at your school to actually help make the difference if that helps. And <coughs> we used to have it as a reimbursable I mean, we have it as a reimbursable, but if there's extenuating circumstances, then we'll give you the, you know, write us a letter, and, um, and, and you can, our emails are at the end of this, um, this presentation. Write us that letter for your school, and we'll get you the $500 grant. Um, That's great. And I'm sure Mary Catherine and Allegra will help you spend it, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the one, the, the other thing I want to mention you know, grants are great, and obviously they're necessary sometimes. Um, the more that you can get 
your your town on board, your school board into integrating the, the especially the physical changes you'd like to see happen. Um, the more likely you're gonna. And you know, it's think about what roads are being repaved. Is there an opportunity to mm. you know restripe? And that you know that's basically free. It's happening anyway. Um, what are the changes that you can make to make wider shoulders to put in bike lanes? That right. sort of thing. Um, right. You know, anyway, that are already part of a capital plan. So just be be aware of those things and advocating for them and knowing how to make those those requests on the local level is is important. We can help you with that, of course. Um, and what I what I'd also like to um, say right now is that. Remember to delegate, you know, remember to be mindful first, what's going on, and then help delegate to help you get this done so that you don't feel like you're standing there alone with this, you know, big, hairy, audacious goal of a plan and, and whatnot. You know, take bite-sized pieces, look at what you have for um, assets and or talent, and any change, any incremental step is important and that's why we want to bring these resources to you. It's not just money, it's all the resources that are there. Yep, partners that can do a lot of the technical work for you. Um, mm -hmm. Us, we're here to help. You know, our goal is to help you be successful. So this is very much a team effort and um, a, a community effort. And it's ongoing, so I know some f folks who were interested in the webinar had questions about, you know, can I update my travel plan, can I ha get some assistance with that, and that's certainly something we can help with. If, you know, if you don't have the physical copy of the plan that was created 10 years ago, we can help you find that and convert it into a document that we can work from together. So, um, you know, it's great to really revisit uh, plans all the time, but at least every five years or so, it's great to, to update them. Make it a living document. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and so just a, qu a quick, you know, I think we've talked through a lot of the different steps and just a quick kind of recap on some of the assistance we can provide. We really can help with all of the different aspects of the plan as needed, um, but, you know, for in particular, kind of doing a site visit, doing that bike and or walk audit with you, um, you know, doing a SWOT analysis, if that's helpful. The, helping, obviously, with the data collection, the mapping, bringing together some of those partners who can also assist with that. Um, if it's helpful, co-facilitating a planning or, or a public engagement process, and then actually drafting the strategy. We know, you know, teachers in particular have a lot on their plates, and so this is, um, may feel overwhelming to take on, and so we can assist with that piece. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you know, the pop-up projects as you, you know, once you have a plan or you have an idea of some of the changes you'd like to even test out, we can definitely assist, you know, with bringing our trailer and leading those. And then, you know, in also finding funding, providing letters of support, that things of that nature. And if there are things on this list that might be helpful, please reach out to us um, and, you know, ask. You know, back to that slide that's uh, the funding. Um, do we have any um, sorts of templates where people like, you know, the coordinators, the wellness coordinators, or the safe routes coordinators, is that something that we could actually help find a template on? That, uh, of a you, grant? Yeah, of a grant. Yeah, you probably, know? So, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I think oftentimes it's going, oh my gosh, how can I even yeah. consider yeah. that? That's an um, and, you know, that would be something, and, and certainly... The, the staff at Go Vermont and VTrans, mm -hmm. uh, John Kaplan right. and, and others, they've done a lot of, seen a lot of this, done a lot of this, and um, again, it's breaking down those barriers, but I think Allegra, you made a very good point, and that is take stock, um, be mindful, and begin to start to see what's going on where you can actually hitch your wagon to it to actually make that physical change, whether it's a street light that's out or it's a crosswalk that needs to be painted. Um, you know, you, it, it's really getting done in places and been successful, but it had the right ingredients. Um, but you just can't start by like diving in and saying, all right, let's do this, you know. And, um, but at the same time, let's do this, you know. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thanks again for listening, and we're happy to answer any questions. All right, so I'm just going to see what we have for any questions. Um, all right, we can definitely um, share a link uh, to some of the data that we have. This is from Megan. Um, so, yes, we, we refer to some data and information in, in this presentation, and we can... We will be following up with those uh, sources. Can we put sources? Uh, we can yep, put and in. and background materials for people who are interested. Uh, anyone else questions? Feel free to use the chat type box. Um, if for anything else, um, I will sort of do some filler chatting while <laughs> <laughs> we uh, wait to see if anyone else has any anything. They need to ask or add. Um, if you don't have any questions, you could actually make it easy and write no questions in the chat box, and then we can uh, just end early if that's where people are at. Uh, I'll just mention that um, we at uh, Go, you know, at uh, Way to Go, VT.org have all you know a lot of partners that we're working with and so I would encourage people to go there and download resources at waytogovt.org. Um, we're still building and strengthening the site so please tell us where we could improve. Um, mm -hmm. You know and it's we're you know this is the, the really the first full year that we've gotten going on this Safe Routes to School partnership. Um, I mean uh, sorry, way to go to school with Safe Fruits. And so we're kind of co-creating this and bringing it together, but there's so much there, and we don't want to overwhelm people, but we want to make sure that you get those kinds of resources that will help you in the classroom. What we didn't mention is our partner, Vermont Energy Education Program. They're in hundreds of schools and have uh, had curriculum with... Um, the curriculum side of this, which we should have probably add, we'll, we can add this on, uh, encourage you to, to reach out and contact us because we're very resourceful. We know, we know who's out there and we know who can help you. So it looks like nobody has any questions. Um, thank you all for attending. Um, and if you do think of something later, you can email us, um, info at waytogovt.org or um, education at locomotion.org or the other, um, other emails. emails right here. So uh, thank you all. We really appreciate your uh, attendance. Have a great day.